Hey there, and welcome to Noctis on YouTube. The concept of a land battleship emerged during World War I as an effort to create a large and powerful war vehicle, similar in size and strength to a naval warship, but designed for ground combat. The idea initially originated from France, but was later adopted by other nations, including Britain and Germany, with each creating their own prototype tanks that were considered land battleships. Although the concept eventually proved to be impractical for use on the battlefield, the idea of land battleships still captivates the interest of researchers and military technology enthusiasts to this day. The Landkreuzer P-1000 Rata a gargantuan tank concept conceived by Nazi Germany during World War II, embodied an unprecedented ambition in military history. Designed by the renowned engineer Krupp in 1942 as a response to Germany's need for a superior and terrifying ground weapon, the Ratte weighed in at 1,000 tons, standing 11 meters tall and 35 meters long. This mechanical behemoth had the potential to subdue its enemies with sheer force and ferocity, However, despite its mysterious and awe-inspiring aura, the rat never progressed beyond the design and concept stages. This armored vehicle was designed to obliterate any obstacle in its path with its impressive arsenal. The rat was to be equipped with two 280mm caliber cannons, taken from Scharnhorst-class cruisers, as well as various anti-aircraft machine guns and anti-tank weapons. With 25 centimeters thick armor plating, the tank was expected to withstand a barrage of bullets and aerial attacks. In addition, the RAT was planned to have a crew of 41 people, including pilots, gunners, technicians, and officers. However, Germany's dream of dominating the battlefield with this steel monster never came to fruition. When Albert Speer, Germany's Minister of Armaments and Ammunition, assessed the project, he declared the RAT to be impractical and canceled it in 1943. The primary reasons for the project's cancellation were limited resources, technical difficulties in construction, and vulnerability to air attacks. Although the Rate never roamed the battlefield, its concept remains a symbol of extreme ambition and innovation in military history, stirring our imagination and admiration for what might have been if the project had actually come to life. During the same tumultuous era of World War II, Another ambitious armored vehicle concept emerged from Australia, Puckridge's Land Battleship. Conceived in 1944 by Lieutenant Colonel James Puckridge of the Australian Army, this massive land ship shared a similar vision with the German Landkreuzer P-1000 Rat to create a highly fortified and powerful weapon that could dominate the battlefield. Puckridge's land battleship was intended to be a colossal, heavily armored vehicle with a wide array of weaponry, including multiple artillery guns and machine guns. Modern technologies have demonstrated that nearly any moving object can be equipped with the most potent energy source available, nuclear power. While nuclear power has been widely adopted for ships and submarines due to gravity and weight constraints, there are virtually no technical limitations preventing the installation of a missile destroyer's entire electronics suite, minus ASW capabilities, sonar, and anti-ship weaponry, onto a robust, super heavy-duty chassis powered by one or two nuclear reactors. Giant vehicles designed for specific tasks have been produced in recent years, which could potentially serve as carriers for such systems, albeit with the common drawback of extremely slow speeds. It's worth noting that nuclear power was tested on tanks in the 1950s, specifically the Chrysler TV-8. In this case, the weight of the shielding was not a hindrance. The TV-8 weighed only 25 tons, and its turret bustle housed a Chrysler V8 engine, consisting of a gas turbine engine drive, a hydrocarbon-based vapor cycle power plant, and a nuclear-powered vapor cycle power plant. The turret's buoyancy enabled the tank to float, making it an early amphibious model. From this, one could envision a larger heavy tank, but the concept quickly faded as main battle tanks took on that role. However, the Astron X-Weapon project didn't offer any significant advantages over conventional designs, and the study was abandoned in 1956, leaving only sketches and a model. One lesser-known yet impressive engineering achievement of the Apollo program was the two 700-ton behemoth known as the Crawler. 
capable of carrying the 3,000 tons of the rocket and 1,500 tons of its support structure. The NASA crawler could potentially lift around 4,500 tons of useful weight on a 40 times 35 meter or about 1,600 square meters surface. Without a doubt, it could accommodate various types of military hardware, controls, and radars. To increase the usable surface area, the two prototypes, built in 1965 by Bucyrus International and Marion Power Shovel Company for $14 million each, could be combined to create a 90-meter-long utility platform capable of housing hardware equivalent to a missile destroyer. However, several extremely limiting factors render this idea impractical at best. Special roads are required to support the vehicle's weight, for example, NASA's crawlerways, and the entire road network and bridges would be inadequate. Speed is painfully slow at 1.6 kph, making the resulting vehicle a nearly stationary target. Fuel consumption is enormous, with 19,000 liters or 5,000 US gallons of diesel fuel burned at a rate of 296 liters per kilometer for a meager distance of just over seven kilometers. Achieving higher speeds would likely require at least double the power of a supercarrier, as ground friction is much greater than marine friction and the forces involved in cross-country travel at higher speeds exceed any material resistance unless using specially engineered carbon fiber reinforced titanium, which would further increase costs. However, there are other ready-made chassis on the market, 4,250W chassis. Supporting the weight of its dragline coal excavator crane, the Ohio-based Big Muskie, spanned 148 meters long and weighed 27 million pounds. This machine could have supported a platform with various equipment, but its top speed was limited to a sluggish 0.1 miles per hour or 0.16 kilometers per h, with a power supply reaching 18.04 megawatts and supplied through a trailing cable 13,800 volts. Needless to say, both autonomy and the energy supply made it impractical but fitting it with nuclear energy might be an option. The Big Muskie was small compared to the 500-meter-long, 13-800-ton overburden conveyor bridge F-60, a German-built 1969 vehicle designed to exploit brown coal, lignite, open-cast mining in the Lusatian coal fields in Germany. With its size and articulated wheel train, it could potentially serve as a support for weapons systems and sensors, However, it relied on externally powered electricity, with a total power output of 27 megawatt or 35,000 horsepower, making nuclear power the only viable option for a top speed of 0.8 kph at best in its original configuration. The smaller is 220 meter long and weighing 13,500 tons, Bagger 288 remains the largest bucket wheel excavator ever built its articulated excavating wheel alone being around 15 meters in diameter. Like the other four manufactured, including the 1995 Bagger 293, these vehicles required an external power supply of 16.56 megawatts, while the entire structure rested on 12 Caterpillar tracks located on two articulated bases. It's important to note that these are mobile structures, not designed for long distances or speed. Any military applications would require a completely new dedicated platform, potentially reusing very little of these concepts. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.